So hey everybody, I am in my friend's banjo studio. <laughs> I think it's actually just like a, a music studio, but it's like a really nice place where I want to make this video for you today. <laughs> anyway, a while back I posted a video on why I didn't want to watch A Hidden Life, which is a Terrence Malick film about Franz Jägerstadt, or I think it's his most recent film. Um, that definitely seemed to upset some people, and since I've told, been told frequently by folks commenting that I really should watch it, I actually finally did watch it. So I watched it on a small screen and then said so the next critique was I should have watched it on a big screen, but <laughs> I'll have to do that next time. Anyway, um, I'm really glad that I did and I've been thinking about it a lot since then. Um, but just to catch up, those of you who've subscribed since I posted that one a while ago, um, and for those of you who don't really know the story, um, it actually takes place during World War, the Second World War. And um, Franz Jägerstetter was a farmer who lived in a village in Upper Austria with his wife, Franziska, or Fanny, that's what they call her, and their three young daughters. Both Franz and his wife were devout Catholics. Um, when Franz was called up for military service, he refused to pledge allegiance to Hitler and to go along in any way with what the Nazis were doing. And he said, I cannot believe that just because one has a wife and children, a man is free to offend God. Um, for that, he was imprisoned and eventually sentenced um, to death and he was beheaded. So first off, as a work of art, the film was amazing. This is the first Terrence Malick film that I've seen and the landscapes, the non-traditional editing of sequences and the jump cuts and so forth, like the silence even and the constant movement of the actors, just everything was just very impressive for me. The beginning of the movie has these absolutely breathtaking panoramic views of the Austrian mountains and forests and there's these simple warm family scenes that take place in and around the Jägerstetter's home um, and their home has like wooden floors and big lighted windows and there's like France and his wife are sitting across from each other sharing an apple together um, or outside on the grassy hillside swinging their beautiful little fair haired, fair -haired girl um, between them it's like totally carefree and it was like this almost like it seemed like it was a totally different world. Um, I actually felt like I connected with Fanny and Fritz in a way that I haven't with other on-screen couples um, because of the fun they had together and it, it was not at all pretentious but just simple and natural and beautiful. But I think that actually may have been the point, showing this almost perfect life next to the dark and uh, grainy old footage of, of a Hitler rally and I actually found um, the original 1930s footage actually a little distracting. Also then the clanging metal and the fluorescent lights of the Tegel prison in Berlin where France was imprisoned. So in the movie, as soon as France makes his stance clear, he has people on all sides trying to convince him to change his mind, like the priest, the mayor, his neighbors, and, and even his wife at some points. They aren't like bad people and it's almost like they feel like they have to try to protect him from himself because what he's doing looks so ludicrous, like throwing away his life and leaving his wife and children without a husband and father. He's told that doing so, he won't change anything. Um, he, you know, he won't change the rest of the world. <laughs> he's told that he's, you know, selfish and stubborn and he's offered the option of non-combatant military service. Um, he's also told that if he's killed for his belief, the result will be the opposite of what he intended because someone else will have to take his place in the war. So you could question why he believed so strongly in what he did. Because most of us, probably without realizing it, make little and big compromises when it comes to our convictions rather than sticking completely to principle. Um, like I can say, like, we'll choose to say nothing when someone says something because um, that we disagree with because it's uncomfortable to speak up. That's just like one example. 
I was actually a little surprised how many people who responded to my original video seemed so convinced that they would have the courage of Franz Jägerstetter in, in a similar circumstance. He was one among hundreds in his village and presumably had no better or different information about current events than the rest of them did. Um, one of the most powerful scenes for me was towards the end of the movie when France is brought before a military tribunal. Um, the judge asks him if he thinks that his actions will change anything and France answers, I have this feeling inside me that I can't do what I feel is wrong. The wrong he is being asked to do, which is swear an oath of loyalty to Hitler, is in the balance with the hardship his refusal will cost his family. All I could think is that the ability to make this decision had nothing to do with human strength of will. Something much greater was at work. So getting to the end of the movie, the movie ends with a black screen and this quote from George Eliot, which is also where the title of the film is from. Um, the quote says, for the growing good of the world is partly dependent on unhistoric acts and that things that are not so ill with you and me as they might have been is half owing to the number who lived faithfully a hidden life and rest in unvisited tombs. So France, as he's depicted in this film, is a simple, hardworking man and you actually aren't given much of a window into his thought process. Um, he's not a, a dramatic or charismatic person and he certainly didn't have a lot of support. Um, in fact, almost the entire little village he was from turned against him and his family after he made his stand clear and they made his, his life pretty miserable. Actually, I read that his wife and his kids were, were treated like traitors and outcasts by their fellow Austrians well into the 1990s, which is kind of crazy. It was so bad that um, when his daughters married later on, Fanny, that's Francis' wife, um, told them, good, now your last name is no longer Jägerstetter. His life really was hidden, and so was his death. It wasn't until decades later that his story was made known. And I had to think that a lot of us today look up to people who have a lot to say, to people who make a lot of noise and drama and attract masses of followers. Um, but like the quote says, the small number who live faithfully a hidden life and act on their convictions you know, these are the people who are actually the ones who are making the difference. So to anyone who hasn't taken the time to watch this film, you should. It definitely challenged me in an uncomfortable sort of a way, which is always a good thing. So take care and happy almost 2021.